In this video, we're going to learn how to make an elevator in the Unreal Engine 4, and I am using 4.12.5 for a version. All right, so first of all, we need an elevator platform. I like to use the basic cube. You may not use geometry because you cannot animate geometry. So use basic cube. And uh, I'll just bring it over here by this um, big cube over here. As you can see, it's a big box, so I'm going to scale it on the Z axis to 0.1, enter. And then uh, you have to right click in here to access the viewport and press the end key, E-N-D, end key, and that drops it to the bottom. And uh, so that's gonna be my moving platform. And then also make sure that it is movable over here. Click movable. All right, that ensures that it will, uh, once I set it up, it'll move. Now let's go and actually animate this moving up. So we'll go into the cinematics button and then uh, we used to use matinee but that's now a legacy feature so we are going to do add level sequence. <clears throat> so we'll click that and uh, put it in a folder here and uh, I normally like to create an assets folder and put it in that so um, that's what I'll do is I'll content add new folder and I will just call it Brad assets. Alright, so I've got an assets folder. Go into cinematics, add level sequence, Brad assets, and uh, I'll just give it a name and I'm just going to call this elevator, uh, elevator 01. How about that? And save it. Alright, so it brings up my sequencer right here. And uh, the sequencer is uh, basically a timeline and uh, over here and it's done by frames per second and we are going to use 30 frames per second and over here on the left side this is where we're going to add objects and things that we want to animate so I'm going to add oh you know what my cube over here so this cube uh, is just called cube and I probably want to change the name of that uh, as well in case I have lots of cubes I'll just call it elevator so that'll just be my elevator all right, so over here I'm going to add something, and I'm going to add actor to sequence, and because I named it elevator, that's what I'm going to add, is the elevator. Well, it comes over with a transform, and so I'm going to click the little triangle next to transform, and then it rolls out the location rotation scale uh, transforms, and I will click the triangle next to location. And then that gives me X, Y, and Z axis coordinates, and I'm going to select the Z coordinate. At frame zero, I would like to set a key there, so I will just press the enter key. There's a couple different things that you could do. You could also uh, click that little button right there to add a new key, um, but I'm just pressing enter. Let me pull this down here a little bit, and uh, let me zoom into my, where, my elevator. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take like uh, 40 frames to go up. So that's a little more than a second since there's 30 frames per second. So I'm going over to 40 and I will raise my elevator platform up to where I would like it to be at 40 frames. And then once again, I'll press the enter key. And you can see I've got a yellow stringy thing there indicating that there is animation movement there. And I'll just click on the red piece here in my timeline and scrub it back and forth and you can see that there is movement. Now I'd like to give the player um, one second to get off of the elevator. So let's add 30 frames to that. So that would be 70 frames. And uh, I'm just going to press the enter key again. That adds another frame to it. And, uh, and that way it should hold still. And you'll notice that it doesn't. It actually has a little bit of motion there in between. I'll go over that in just a moment. And, uh, and then let's have it come back down again over the course of 40 frames. So now I will give it 110 frames and, uh, oops, one more, and drag it back down to where I wanted it to sit and press the Enter key. All right, so the animation for this is it goes up over 40 frames. It should sit still over 30 frames, and then it will go back down over 40 frames, and my animation is finished. All right, now why does it do this little wobble here in between these two? Well, there's something called the curve of natural motion, and uh, it didn't used to be like this, but it is now, and uh, until 
uh, Epic fixes that, um, then we'll just have to fix it manually. The way to do that, go into your curve editor by clicking this little button right here. I always think it looks like a high heel shoe, but it's the curve editor, so I'll click it. And now my um, curves, you can see this curve here, and that's the motion. So the, the, uh, the, the actual, the height of the platform follows this curve here. So watch, as it's closer there, it goes down, but it goes up, and then it comes down again. The way to fix this is I'm going to click and drag over these two points, and I'm going to flatten their tangents in between there. I have some uh, tangents over here, and there's one called linear or interpolation, and I will click that and see it flattened the tangents in between there. Oh, look, it also flattened that one, which is fine. Um, I could actually flatten them all if I wanted to. Um, you know what? Let's uh, let's bring this one back again. So let me see what this one is. That's uh, cubic interpolation. This one I probably actually need to um, to break break the tangent. There we go. That way it gives me flat here, and then it eases out, and then it eases in right there. It gives me nice, smooth transition for my elevator platform. And then when I'm done here, I can just go back by clicking my Curve Editor button, and I am back inside my, um, my timeline. All right, I'm done in the sequencer, so I'm going to X out of it. And now we've got to trigger this animation, because something has to turn the the elevator platform on and off. So I'm going to use a trigger. I'll just go into uh, all classes, scroll all the way down, and I'll find a trigger. I'm just going to use like my capsule trigger this time. So I'll drag that out. I'm just going to use different triggers for different things. And then uh, I'm going to tap the space bar and scale out that trigger a little bit, probably right there. That looks good. And uh, with your trigger selected, now let's go into Level Blueprint. So I will go into Blueprints, Open Level Blueprint. And uh, let's go ahead and create a blueprint for this. Let me see if I can pull this out and expand it so you all can see it. All right, so remember that my, my uh, trigger is the thing that I have selected right now. And I will right click in my Level Blueprint. And it gives me some uh, some options here based on context sensitive information. So I will click the triangle there next to collision and add on actor begin overlap. And so I have this uh, this overlap right here. The next thing is that I would like to um, I would like to trigger that level sequence that I created. And uh, let's do that. But first of all, let me get the um, Let's get the level sequence here. I find that it's actually, let me pull this up a little bit. I find that it's actually easier if I get the level sequence already in there. So I'm gonna look over here and sure enough, there is my level sequence. It even says level sequence actor. And then I will right click in my level blueprint and create a reference to elevator 01. That's the level sequence. And uh, I'll drag off the blue channel and type in get sequence player. There it is. You can see it right there. Get sequence player. And then, uh, and then from there, I'll drag off the blue channel. And I just want to play the sequence. So I will type in the word play. And uh, it's going to be right here under uh, game. And notice I have context sensitive on. So it gives me just the play that I'm looking for, the one under game cinematic. If I were to turn that off, there's a whole lot of other plays that become available to me now, like play under audio, and there's play for animation. What does that play? Uh, and there's just a whole bunch of different plays there. So I'm going to leave that on, and it brings up the one I want. Click play. And you can see that this says target is level sequence player. And then I'll connect them through the executable. Connect. And uh, that should be finished. So let's select it all. Press C to comment it. And this will be my um, elevator uh, by the block. All right. And let's compile it and go test it and see if it works. So now I'm in my viewport. Let's see. Let's hit play. Press F11 to full screen it. And uh, hey, look, there's an elevator. Let's see if we can get on that thing. I'm on it. 
1001 and then we're down again there it is and it works all right thanks for watching let me uh know if you have any questions send me an email bjswearingen at juno.com thank you very much